after UK, I'll be moving to another uh, Commonwealth nation and we'll be discussing Canada. What are the opportunities in Canada for uh, Indian orthopedic trainees? Most of this talk is uh, structured on the basis of my own uh, experiences in Canada during a clinical fellowship at the University of Toronto. So this was in uh, 2020, just uh, at the peak COVID period. So the Canadian system in terms of application, it's pretty straightforward. There is a website known as the uh, Canadian Orthopedic Association website and that has a directory of fellowships. So if you go under the subheading education and practice, there will be multiple Canadian fellowships by program which are listed. So in my case, if I go on to University of Toronto, this is what pops up. So under University of Toronto, there are various fellowship options that are there in different subspecialties. All you have to do is click on the link and you'll get similar uh, fellowship positions across all universities in Canada. So there are a plethora of options. As you can see, there are multiple universities, multiple subspecialty options and decision making becomes difficult. In this case, as majority of the past speakers have said, talking to your senior colleagues is of great help. For example, in Mumbai, there is a big uh, group of spine surgeons who have done a lot of their training in Canada. We have seniors like Dr. Gautam Zaveri, Dr. Arvind Kulkarni, we have Dr. Chandan Mohanty from the, uh, from the neurosurgical side who have been there, done that. So feel free to reach out to them at many of the BOS events like Viroc. That is the best place where you can get in touch with these people, interact with them. Most of them are forthcoming and they will guide you well. For me, uh, it was a Viroc that uh, really changed things. Dr. Gautam Zaveri introduced me to one of the speakers who had come in from Sunny Brook for Viroc and uh, that is how the ball uh, got rolling. The other thing that you can do is you can actually visit the place as an observer. So in 2019, the Global Spine Congress was in Canada. I took that opportunity to submit a paper and present it on the podium. Along with the paper, I applied for an observer post which got me two weeks uh, with the University of uh, Toronto Spine program. That helps you to directly interact with the current fellows, the bosses, see the work culture and helps you decide whether it is worth waiting for a few years and getting into the program, giving 15-20 months of your life uh, in, uh, in that program. In terms of the requirements, I have tried to classify the requirements as must have and nice to have. So for the must have requirements, you should already be MS Ortho or DNB Ortho certified from India. You need a, a few basic uh, documentation so that's a letter of intent a CV three letters of recommendation and the good thing is you get exposure to the North American uh, surgical functioning without the licensing exam that is needed in USA so you get the North American experience without having to go through MLE and all those hassles these letters of recommendation preferably if they are coming in from past fellows or somebody who's already been there that would be uh, ideal. So in my case, uh, we had Dr. Samir Darvi, Dr. Arvind Kulkarni writing their re recommendation letters. So that helps you get in. The other requirements are once uh, you are sort of approved, your fellowship is approved, there is a good amount of paperwork that is required. This paperwork approximately takes six months to one year. So you have to be locally registered with the uh, CPSO. So that's like the Canadian Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario. Because you will be working on a job and getting paid a salary, you also have to do all the documentation for a work visa. It's not that you're left at sea with those documentation. There is a person there on the university side who will help you while submitting the paperwork, but it's a little tedious. It's not rocket science. It just requires you to spend a lot of time doing it. Apart from that, you require uh, proficiency in English language. So either IELTS, the academic one, or uh, TOEFL, something like that is required where uh, that's a mandatory document. Amongst the nice to have requirements, we have already discussed from morning that uh, you should have a good amount of research or publications in your CV. 
just like majority of the other uh, foreign fellowships the canadian structured fellowship also requires you to be on the teaching side so if you already have some basic knowledge about spine or orthopedics in my case because it's a teaching job you're expected to teach their residents you're expected to be on call where you are taking some decisions so if you have previous indian experience that will be good to have and uh, if your referees are their own past fellows that will also help you so this fellowship program is typically of one year duration it starts on 1st of august ends on the sub july of the subsequent year there have been fellows who have done six month fellowships as well i don't really recommend that because the initial few months of the fellowship actually go in establishing a rapport with your mentor and the best time is really towards the end of the fellowship so six month program would be too short to uh, complete all of that there are people like we have dr aditya raj here with us who has done a clinical plus research year in canada so you can also do like a combined clinical plus research fellowship the good thing is even during your research year you are not exactly out of the or because you will still continue to have call days you can participate during your on call days or even otherwise when your research commitments are over so that's one more option if you want to go for a longer duration there is a provision for adding extra time for some subspecialty development for example in my case i wanted to spend a little more time with dr steve lewis in uh, spine deformity so i could make an application and get the fellowship extended by 3 months to spend extra time learning something which you have additional interest in or you feel it's a knowledge gap just like uk uh, you are well paid so if you are going in uh, just as a fellow without your family you can live comfortably even with a family there wouldn't be any hassles remuneration is approximately 75000 canadian dollars per annum you will be spending a fair amount of money during your paperwork so while processing your work visa registration with the cpa so all of that takes uh, some amount of money to be spent fortunately the university takes care of it most of your charges are reimbursed there are some other uh, ways and means to earn pocket money so the university funds you approximately 34 dollars 35 dollars for uh, training their residents or undergraduate students so on your free days you can take lectures for their medical students or the residents and you get some money for it uh, just like uk you get remuneration for presenting your work at conferences so the registration of the conference travel expenses those are taken care of the caveat being the research that you are presenting has to be done at the university you cannot present your indian work there and expect a reimbursement so uh, there is a good work life balance in uh, canada as well there is four week vacation every year it's a paid vacation apart from uh, monday to friday if you are not on call weekends are free so you are free to explore uh, the city and the country during my time unfortunately it was not possible because it was peak covid so everything was shut down so it was just academics for me apart from these weeks you get one week of professional leave for attending conferences again all of that is paid for in terms of clinical duties you your duty is basically uh, attending the ot attending the clinic ward rounds usually when it comes to the wards your functioning is not like a resident so you are more like in a supervisory role you are not expected to put in the patient orders or do the dressing changes it is uh, the nurse practitioners and residents who do bulk of that work your job is only to supervise things even on the on call days you are not expected to be on campus you can do the call day uh, from your house basically it's the resident who's first on call and is managing things you are expected to go in only if there is a case that needs a surgery or a patient needs an opinion on a consult so that you don't have to be on site 24/7 the call days are once every fourth day in terms of canada most of the fellowships are combined ortho neuro particular when we discuss uh, spine in particular so uh, the divisions are such that you have orthopedic as well as neurosurgical mentors that was a big boon for me because uh, we may have our disagreements on some things when it comes to fixation but i agree that there is a lot to be learnt from the neurosurgical side as well 
when it comes to handling the dura and intradural stuff so that was a big advantage six months uh, you spend with a neurosurgical mentor and you start looking at spine from their perspective as well at toronto we had a total of uh, four senior consultants and two junior consultants in the unit so you get exposed to different bosses different styles of functioning and decision making in terms of case load there was a good variety of uh, cases right from your simple micro discectomies to uh, may big deformity surgeries or on block resections every consultant who was there had a particular interest be it cervical spine be it deformity so during your rotation with that mentor you get exposure to a subspecialty in spine too apart from clinical work you have academic duties so once a week there are some weekly rounds that you have to present once a month there are morbidity mortality meets where you are talking about your complications there is some amount of teaching that happens where medical students as well as orthopedic residents are involved you are expected to complete a few research projects so at least one is mandatory apart from that rest is as per your interest and inclination there is no exit exam as such just like dr nikhil mentioned it is more of a job you are already completely trained but you do have some assessment and evaluation that happens during your training program so once you get to canada uh, there is something known as pap which is pre entry evaluation and assessment for the initial 3 months uh, this program continues where subconsciously your mentors and other people in the unit are observing you and then they give you the go ahead i do know of a few fellows who have been sent back at this stage also like after being accepted into the program there was uh, one fellow from japan who had no knowledge of working english and just could not integrate into the system and had to drop out at the pap stage but that's an anomaly majority of the people sail through this part of it there is some training and assessment that happens at the 6 month mark the interesting thing is you are also expected to evaluate your mentor so you are supposed to give feedback about your teacher and how your rotation was some of the really bad teachers were not allotted fellows in the subsequent year once you finish the program the fellows will get a certificate from the hospital as well as from the university of toronto on completion there's a good post uh, fellowship connect with the uh, canadian bosses they have an alumni group we regularly meet for example this year's global spine congress the, we had a small alumni meet with the group you can continue with uh, the research that you are conducting there you can get back some of the research and uh, complete it back in india we actively discuss tricky cases with our bosses there they also help you to transition into practice this alumni connect i believe uh, dr supreet will mention because that has helped him in a big way transitioning to practice so there was a similar uh, post fellowship connect with the alumni and bosses which has helped me also while setting up practice in the initial years so to conclude i had a good time in uh, canada i uh, would i have no regrets spending that amount of time here it was probably the best year of my life in terms of training there are a few cons uh, there is a harsh and long winter which we are not used to the other thing is it has a really long wait list a number of seats are few you are competing with canadian trainees so 50% of the seats go to canadian trainees there are some countries who send funded fellows to the university so saudi arabia israel they send their trainees and salaries are taken care of by their country so those fellows get preference so once all those seats are covered there are a very few seats which are left for international orthopedic graduates so you should be prepared to have like a 2 to 3 year wait period apply immediately once you are out of residency like i applied in uh, 2018 and could get into the program in 2020 so those are probably the only two cons thank you everyone